Welcome everybody, RC here on The Grid, and I am joined this week by a very, very special guest. I'm really excited about this. We have Corey Barker here. What's up, dude? How's it going? Not bad, not Good bad. to see you. Not bad. Mm -hmm. So, we're taking over the show. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Because everybody's gone. And, and I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, wait, Pete? Wait, no, then. But I'm glad. I'm glad this has actually worked, mm -hmm. because we're going to try to tackle two topics here. Uh, you've got a brand new class that just came out. I do. Mm -hmm. That's actually killing it. Yep. I mean, every class that Corey does kills it. But specifically, like this one's getting a lot of buzz. I'm especially proud of this one because it starts starting out a new series and it's got it's something unique I haven't done before. So. Right. So it's mm -hmm. the Master FX series. We're going to talk about that mm -hmm. to, to, to some extent on that. So I'm, I'm glad all of you guys are here as well. We also wanted to do something a little bit different. A lot of the times whenever we start setting up stuff, people are always asking about portfolio reviews and website reviews. Mm -hmm. right? And Scott does a lot of the portfolio reviews, and I think that that's really cool. But we're I, I figured, you know what, why not? Why don't we just work on the website portion of it? So that's mm -hmm. what we're going to take care of. we got a bunch of websites, and we want to be able to get jump into it. But before we do, so there's no Brad. Uh, Scott's not here. Pete's not here. So it's just Corey and I. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be monitoring your chat as well. So make sure that you're going to kelbytv.com slash the grid to monitor the chat. And that should pretty much kick everything off. Oh, what do you, you got? You got palette, 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 palette. Yeah, miss, let me talk about palette. If you guys haven't seen this already, all right, I was just doing a, a review for them earlier earlier today. So palettegear.com, they came up with this thing that's kind of like a touch interface. Mm -hmm. for artists, right? And and they're billing it for photographers, and I think that that's, you know, it's pretty cool. But basically, it's a tactile controller, right? It's this magnetic controller that you can use for stuff. And they were on Kickstarter, and they did a great job with mm -hmm. it, and they got, you know, funded, and everybody's like, I can't wait for me to get mine, I can't wait to get yeah. mine. And I'm like, we have one. It's right here. So I have it all kind of blown out in this one section. And I mm. figured I would just show you guys just very, very quickly uh, some stuff that we're working with it, right? So it comes together with an app. So like this is the brain of the device, mm. right? So you take this and you plug it into your USB connection, right? So now I have that kind of connected, right? So there's palette, right? Mm. And then what happens with that is that gets paired with an app. So you start this app, and this app will turn around and say, all right, well, what do you want to do? All right, and right now it's saying profile six, right? And you can specify how you want this to work. Mm -hmm. So in this instance, you would say, well, I want this to control Lightroom, I want this to control Photoshop or Illustrator or After Effects or what have you, a bunch of different things. Right. And just to kind of keep it simple, I would just say, all right, well, I'm going to construct this so that it's doing Lightroom. Mm. Right now, you get a bunch of different controllers, right? So first, when you get here, can I just point out something I think is really cool about this? You notice when you select a Lightroom there, you can see the Lightroom icon. Yeah, appears right there on the little brain device, so you know exactly what app you're using when, mm -hmm. you, when you're on it. Right. So here you have this. So you have the button device. So there's a button. If I wanted it, watch what happens when I plug it in here. So I'm going to plug it in. Click magnetic. As soon as I plug it in the button shows up on the interface. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do I want to do with that button? I'm going to click on it. Oh, I'm going to go to a flag, and I'm going to flag that as pick. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab one of the other buttons. I'm going to take that button and magnetically connect it. Bip. There's the second button. I'm going to grab it over here. I'm going to go flag, and I'm going to flag that as rejected. This is the first thing that I did with it when I thought oh, it was really cool. You get this thing that's called an infinite slide. So it slides infinitely. I mean, uh, what you call it? Uh, Scroll, nah. scrub. Scrolls yeah. infinitely, mm -hmm. right? So now I have scrolling, 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 scrolling. So I can grab this and I'm gonna plug this in on this side. So now I'm gonna take this command right here and library selection, select previous and next. Very, very simple setup. The number one thing that I do when I'm working with Lightroom images mm -hmm. is culling. That alone would be something that I would be like, you know, this is totally cool. Whenever I'm culling something, I want to jump into a scenario. I'm going to start up Lightroom real quick. And I'm just going to set back. I hate using the keyboard. I hate using yeah. mm -hmm. My Wacom tablet is all for editing. Mm -hmm. That is totally where it's at. But whenever I'm doing any kind of culling, right, flag, rank, sort, pick, and things mm -hmm. like that, I want to be able to just kind of sit back, go to full screen, and in full screen, I want to go pick, reject, next, pick, reject, next. Mm -hmm. So now I can sit there like this. I have the three buttons and I have the dial. I could just go pick, 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 reject, reject. Oh, I missed it. Turn the knob back. 
Yeah, that one. Pick, pick, reject, reject, hmm. pick. Oh, I messed it up right there. I gotta go back a couple here. Let me go back, 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 and then go forward, forward, forward. Pick, pick, reject. Yep. That alone I thought was really cool. Hmm. But then it got even better because now I can turn around and say, all right, well, what about a slider? Oh. Right? So you'll turn around, you grab this. I'm gonna go to the palette app. Cool. Yeah. Boom, put a slider in there. Guess what? It remember the last time that I used it, it said that it was contrast. I just actually, here, if it was here, you could define it. Mm -hmm. But because I've done this before, yep. it remembers everything. It remembered that that dial was highlights. So you know what? I'm going to pull it off and put it over there. That's my highlights dial. That is my select previous. This is my shadows. That's contrast and exposure. Ah, mm -hmm. I messed it up. Here. Contrast first, or exposure first, contrast second. Mm-hmm. Automatically picks up all of that setup. Now watch this. I'm going to switch over here, move to the develop. Watch how fast this works. Look, no lag time. Yeah, that's really responsive. So here, did that, a little bit of contrast. I'm going to tweak this knob right here for highlights. If you press it down and turn it, it turns bigger. If not, it's just regular fine control. There, press this, shadow control, a little bit of exposure, a little bit of highlights. You're off to the races. That, I thought, was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, to be able to have that, I, like, I want seven sliders, and I want to sit back and just be like, do, 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 yep, this is good, this is great, this is good. I keep thinking of the Super Nintendo controller every time I look at it. <laughs> it's just neat. It's a yeah. really, really cool thing. I don't want to spend any more time with it. I'm mm -hmm. just going to kind of pull this out. And one of you guys is going to win this somewhere on the internet, because it's not here, because we're not giving it away. But I'm just going to set that over there. If you want to take a look That's at true, this. That's true, because I haven't had a chance to really dig yeah, into it. Yeah, it, it's, so. it's cool, man. I'm mm -hmm. really excited about it. I did a whole bunch of stuff on it in mm -hmm. design and a bunch of other stuff. But if you want to take a look at it, make sure you go take a look at palette.palletgear.com. Palletgear. Great site for that. Anyway, people had been asking about a demo. I was like, you know what? Let's just do it live. Mm -hmm. Let's get it out of the way. <laughs> Websites. Websites, indeed. Let's get ahead and talk about it. We got about quite a few of them submitted in there. All right, so. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with most of them. Yeah, pretty much all of them, honestly. So. That's something that I thought was really neat. It was if there's one thing that, that a lot of times we're doing website stuff, yeah. where it was like, Ugh, I don't know. Mm. All right, we'll show it. The people that submitted websites this time around have mm. got some really cool sites. Yeah, they do. Mm. So it's gonna be very short. It's gonna be anticlimactic mm -hmm. when it comes to this. If if you're looking for drama, which I'm pretty happy that we're not. But we'll start with this one. Right, so we have Hartbrick. Right, it looks like it's in German. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna cancel that real quick. So home blog. So your navigation is pretty good. This is pretty neat. It's clean at the very, very top. Mm -hmm. Immediately, right off the bat, the, one of the first things that I'll do is I'll grab the browser and I'll go, and so I'll move yeah. it in. Yeah. Right. That's, that's nice. So it's respond. Let me just move this palette side down here, and you're gonna have to watch the chat for me. So oh, yeah. I'm gonna quit palette here close some stuff out so we can kind of see things here. Now, inside of here, it's responsive, right? So it looks like it moves from one side to another. So that part I think is pretty neat, right? When you click on one individual picture, it looks like it's doing some loading, some loading, some loading, some loading. Hope it's not flash. Not, right? <laughs> now, if you're interested in pictures, please contact me. So the right click has been disabled. A lot of the times, I, I, I usually tell people, like, I understand why people would want to do this, but more often than not, I, I tend not to, to want to do that. So if there's one thing that I would say is a takeaway from this is don't do this. Mm. Um, it, it tends to actually harbor more ill will than you think that it does, right? Mm. And people are like, oh, well, you can't right-click. Okay, well, that's right, but I could right-click, you know, I could right-click here. Oh, no, maybe I can't. Right. I could right click here. So no right clicking is is enabled at all, mm -hmm. right? But if you really wanted to, then you know, you could just go here uh and probably go under the developer console, right? And then from here view the source of the file, then you can come in here Cause it's and go way all right. too much fun to look at a website and code. Right? And then I can scroll down until I find the section that actually has it and then steal the graphic that way, or I can just do this. Screenshot, come over here, just Drag right here across this, hit the enter key, and your picture was stolen. Done. Today on the grid, how to hack images. Yeah, how to hack images. So there you go. I have your picture for all of the time. And now it's a really bad copy of it. So 
you're not really blocking anything. It's one of those things that we tell people, it's like, yes, you could do it, but basically you're disabling a whole bunch of JavaScript stuff that is just invariably going to backfire, mm-hmm. and it would just do that. But other than that, I mean, it looks, it looks really clean. It looks really, really nice. Um, it's got a blog, which I think is pretty good, right? So this I'm more interested in. And it's something we were talking about earlier is that a lot of a lot of these sites don't have blogs, or they're or they're buried. Rather. That was one of the other things that I thought was interesting about what they were doing with this is that a lot of the sites did not have blog. If you guys hear the pitter patter of rain, don't necessarily worry about it. It's war, just it's a, we're in Tampa. We're in Tampa, yeah. This so is, yeah. now from here, so that's the first site. Uh-huh. I thought it was nice. No, I like I like the way it redrew as you resized. The very clean, very, clean, very, very smooth, nice, very smooth action. Uh, you you were doing uh, I I guess is uh, Rolf has done a very good job on this site. I like his shootings, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's necessarily a German thing. I probably wouldn't call photography shooting, but that could just be, you know, Depending that could on where be you a translation are, thing. Yeah. I guess it could be But there's, a, there's a, a wide variation of different types of shooting, indoor, mm-hmm. outdoor, very colorful and black and white. It's, yeah, I mean, he seems like, and, and, and we're going to try not to make a lot of critiques on the actual pictures because that would be more of a Scott thing. Mm-hmm. We just want to take a look at the overall space of what's happening with this. So all in all, not bad. Uh, let's go ahead and close that. We'll move to the next one. M&M photography. Ah, yes. Very nice. Coverage. Pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. You're starting strong. And, 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 and that's the thing. When you're working with most of this, you want to put your best foot forward. I would disagree that this is your best foot forward. But if you wanted to make a really cool impact, you know, that's probably not your best foot forward. That's probably not your best foot forward. That's not your best foot forward. I mean, if he's a landscape guy, then great. Mm. But he does flowers as well. Okay. I thought that was cool. I would have done that. Yeah, I like that. But... The that fact that that one's a start, that one's a great for a starter of. Yeah, it does a lot of different types of pictures. Okay, so that's really mm-hmm. neat, right? I love that the logo's there, right? I, I like the fact that they have all of their portfolios kind of set up. It looks pretty good. I like that the social icons sit on the top right. You have a section to search for the website this way. It's really easy and right there, yeah. And it's pretty neat. You have an about section. We go to the about section. Thanks for visiting the website. Love taking pictures. All types of subjects. It looks, it looks clean. It looks nice. It looks really good. Go to the contact page. Perfect. All of your social icons. Mm-hmm. All of you know your now daytime phone number. Is that a business number or is that a Google Voice number? Right. I would probably check. You know, consider that. Yeah. You know, you want to make sure that you want to make sure that 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 number isn't somebody that you know at four o'clock in the morning they'd be like, I'd like to be able to <laughs> take a look at your website. And then you want to... So just, if you're cool with it, you so want that phone call. Are you trying to be like the guy from Saw? They're just saying. <laughs> I've never seen Saw. Oh, Is it a good movie? It's creepy. All right. Okay, something to look at. <laughs> Other than that, it seems like it's fine. We're going to go back over to the blog section. I'm always hammering blog. I think blogs are important, right? Every single time I talk about this. Here's mm-hmm. the thing. If that blog were never there, there'd be no reason for me to come back to the site. Yo, it's the only way, other than their social feeds, but the only way to know what's going on day to day. You know? Right. And it also, do, and it, do you look at when they post, how often they post on their blogs? That can be something that, that can be a consideration as well. Absolutely. I've looked at some blogs, and you're like, their last post would have been like three months. You know, and then you're like, hmm. You're like, you know, all right, well, so very little attention is given to this blog. Is that much given, little attention given to the site overall, you know? Mm-hmm. So. So, but other than that, it looks like it's pretty good. Another really nicely designed site. Mm-hmm. Let me get and close that out. Ah! <laughs> ah! Right? Now, I know Robert, so I, I mess with him. But uh-huh. a lot of the times, like, I, I, the picture could be interesting, but if you wanted to freak people out, that's what you lead off with. Right? You start off the website and it's like, ah! ah! Or she could be doing the... Well, I'm just telling you something. This is my two cents. Like, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So if that's kind of what you're going for, then cool. Uh, people, places, food, experiments, about, and contact. Right? Seems very straightforward. Right? You can get in. Oh, hey. look. Hey! That's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> I love this website. Uh, not, I mean, yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's, a, it's appropriate. Or something. Extremely diverse collection of images. And, and extremely, yeah, I'm going to go to places. Places is safer. <laughs> so we'll go there. 
right? But I mean, the website as a whole is pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. I like the fact that there's the buy option. This tells me that this has got to be a smug bung. Uh, buy this photo. All right. This is one of the things I, I think it's great. Dude, I think as a whole, I think it's a great, it's a nicely designed site. I don't mind the logo. I think it's okay. Social icons are sitting on the top, all of these different things. And again, we're, I'm not trying to judge these things too much from a, I'm not trying to judge these things too much from a commercial standpoint. Mm -hmm. How well do they sit commercially? Because you know what, guys, at the end of the day, you could just have a website because it's cool because you want to share your stuff. Yep. It doesn't necessarily have to be, well, I wouldn't do this if I were a business. Well, maybe you're not a business. You're probably sitting there going, you know what, I'm just doing this because this is fun. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing it because it's fun, good for you. You know what, man? You're sharing. Good well, and you. of course, we're living in a time where building your, you know, there was a time when you said you should have a website and that, that would make people just you know, run scared because nobody knew how to build a website. But there are services now that just make it so much easier. Uh, even if you're not savvy in web design, there are services like Squarespace and WordPress that you can get something up yeah. and running. Squarespace, no WordPress, time. SmugMug, you can get everything done in mm. no time, no mm. time flat. Yeah. And, and and you know what? Here's the funny part about it. I'm, I'm writing the second edition of Get Your Photography on the Web, mm -hmm. right? And on the first edition of it, I was like, Flash is where it's at. <laughs> Flash portfolio. How do you feel about that now? <laughs> and now I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so much. I don't know, yeah. man. I don't know. But would you look at, like, I exclusively use WordPress mm -hmm. as the main portion of how I host my site, mm -hmm. and I use SmugMug. Yeah. Right? So my poor, rather than holding yeah, my portfolio, fan, yeah. dude, I'm a huge SmugMug fan, mm -hmm. because what the amount of pain that they've taken away from portfolio management mm -hmm. and order fulfillment and things like that, yeah. I'm, like, happy. Oh, I'm absolutely. Huge yeah. SmugMug guy. So they do a really, really good job. Uh, for that, so we're going back and forth. Like this happens to be a smug mug portfolio, so I'm, I'm happy to see that because mm -hmm. I see it right here. Smug mug ink. Um, but the overall execution of the site is pretty good. The overall execution of the site is clean. It moves right, so it responds. A large portion of your websites are being seen in mobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's one of the first considerations that you have to say to yourself: Can your website be seen on a mobile implementation? Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, that's their primary. That's the primary. You thing, know, the so. websites, their desktop websites, really, they're just a mm -hmm. you know a byproduct. Mm -hmm. So so that looks good. Uh, Susan Koppel, it's barely barely legible. All right, so if you're going to do this as a logo, it needs to be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. If you're going to put your name in it, I have to be able to read it. You know, if you're a branding identity of any kind, yeah, it really needs to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're going to do this, then I would separate the logo and, and the given logo. The, given the layout of the site, I would more make it a vertical logo, like a stack logo, if you're going to have that that way. Yeah. It's a like, horizontal format in a, in a vertical space. In a vertical formatted space, so that's it's going to have. It's only going to have so much uh, size until it reaches the edges. So. Yeah, like I, I mean, if, if we were talking about this just from a pure logo thing, and guys, I am not a logo designer, so I, I won't I won't say mm -hmm. that. But imagine if you had Susan Koppel, right, and you had Susan on one side and Koppel on the other side, mm -hmm. and stacked it that way, that would kind of be good. Of course, make the graphic a, much much bigger, and mm -hmm. then it would be a top mm -hmm. logo. So that's just the logo thing. But mm -hmm. it's the first thing that it makes me think. If I see type somewhere that I can't read. Now, all of a sudden, I'm like, uh, what did that say? You know, mm -hmm. personal portfolio, travel, and projects. Okay, personal photography. Some of my favorite images are on this page. You know, I think this is a little redundant, right? I wouldn't put that as the main thing on the site. You don't have to say anything there at all. Well, I was going to say, you don't have to really say they're your favorite images. You're, the mere fact that you're putting them on your site for people to see would Says indicate that, that they're your favorite images. Yeah. You know? It's like, it, yeah. these are some pictures that I think suck. I yeah. hope you agree. Yeah. <laughs> Does any like, photographer have a page on their site that says, these are the images I'm not so thrilled out, but I want to show you anyway. No, I've never seen that. Yeah. yeah. No, you wait until somebody's here in person, and you turn around and go, hey, I want to take a look, and you try to stuff those mm -hmm. in. Um, other than that, home, animals, travels, people, sports. My personal blog. I'll go to the blog. Samsung test drive. Okay, uh, okay perfect here. Uh, I don't know what happened here. I still would argue, it looks like this went to another blog, so that looks a little weird. Uh, animals, tabby cat photography. Okay, it looks like we're losing an internet connection here. So I don't know if this is you or me. Let's go to Fossil Rim. That look, is taking a very long look, time. Look, it's 1999, internet. 
<laughs> That's what it looked like. Loading, mm -hmm. loading. Man, I can't wait. This is going to look really good. This image is going to look awesome when it loads. The quality of this is really nice, but if I can't see it within a second or two, and, and again, Susan, I'm just going to say, I could fully understand that this is probably our internet connection. Sometimes the internet is like downtown mm -hmm. Botswana. That's a good um, mm -hmm. So sometimes it, it could be that, right? So if you go to Yellowstone, that's where I would just go back. Yeah. That's about as much as I would see on that. I would not spend that much more time. So you might want to consider here, Australia. Let's take a look. Uh, nope, too much. That's what the user experience is going to be for the person who's watching your website. So boom, make it small, bring it bigger. It's going to be a lot. Let's mm. do this. Let's take a quick break. Uh, we've gone through a couple. When we come back, we'll take a look at some more of those sites. And then I want to do a little bit of a tutorial, talk a little bit about... Yeah, I'm going to uh, do a little demo from the class. I'm going to do a little demo live in the yeah, class. There we go. Mm -hmm. Right here on the grid. We'll see you guys in a bit. Hi, this is Joe McNally for Kelby One, and I'm talking about my brand new tour, The Moment It Clicks. It's a full day of lighting and laughs, but built into this day are the reasons why we light a picture. We set the stage by showing pictures and examples and have a discussion about the reasons you would light a photograph. And then in the middle part of the day, we actually build a photograph from scratch or a series of photographs using the room that we're in. I treat it as a location and with speed lights and a bit of bigger flash as well, I actually articulate every step of the way that you go from kind of a bad environment to a really interesting, wonderful portrait session. Then, in the close of the day, we show the path or the life of a photographer and talk about the ups and downs of this profession. And at the very end, all of you are invited to send in portfolios of your work. And during that last hour, I critique everything that's on the screen, we have a discussion, and again, we talk about advancing our photography together. It's a wonderful day, it's very full, very rich, Lots of pictures, lots of lighting, and as I said earlier, lots of laughs. Hope to see you soon. I've been shooting headshots since 2002 when I started my headshot business. Headshot photography in New York was going crazy and I needed to earn a living and there was never anything out there or any information for how to take a good headshot. Fast forward, headshots are crazier than ever. They need a good headshot, and it's not only actors. Everybody has a digital identity. I wrote a book called The Headshot. It is everything that I have figured out over the last 12 years of shooting these suckers and becoming known as one of the best headshot photographers in the world. I go over everything. You're gonna get the lighting, you're gonna get positioning, you're gonna get the way I direct them. It's all about expressions and connecting with your subject. I'm gonna give you all the tools to do that. When I do a headshot that somebody looks at and goes, wow, that's me, to have the ability to do that well is something that you gotta have in your repertoire as a portrait photographer. I'm Peter Hurley, this is my new book, The Headshot. Check it out wherever cool books are sold. Shabang! Welcome back, everybody, to The Grid. RC Concepcion here with Corey Barker, and we're doing some website reviews, and we're going to be doing a little bit on your class live. Mm -hmm. So we'll take care of that in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, now, let's go back to these things. Now, you'll hear me talking a lot about the concept of websites and, and, and blogs specifically. What's happening with most of this stuff is a lot of the times people don't necessarily understand that... When you go take a look at this one website, that is a lot of real estate. So this is coming back here. Mm. Susan, it's like, this is a little too small. This is a little too big. It's occupying, I mean, you know, that, it's almost filling up the entire, you know, screen. Now. Yeah, this needs to be like a quarter of a amount of this, mm. right? So you, you and might want to consider. Perhaps. And centered, yeah. yeah, centered. Yeah. If you're going to do something like that, then put it all the way in the center. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me just see something over here. That's not bad when it's like that. So it's a little responsive. Mm. Uh, but there's some work there. Again, perhaps was initially thinking of mobile devices when it was initially being designed. Yeah. So it's possible. So. This is not This is not bad. This is okay, but that logo is kind of a bit of a pain. So I'd be very curious as to see what yeah. this site's designed in because uh, we could probably help with something like that. So Ray of Art. Ray of Art uh, looks like we have home, about, blog, browse, search, tips. I don't know why this is going into a secondary category. That tends to look a little weird. 
So if you could find a template or something that puts all of this stuff into one category, mm -hmm. that'd be nice, right? I think it, it, it throws people off. Uh, home, uh, let's see, where did our website connection go? Let's, uh, let's see here, take a look. No, 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 come on, internet. Did we just lose everybody? I hope not. Let's see. Yeah, well, it looks like it looks like the storm is knocking out quite a bit of stuff here. Let me see here. Uh, I... Yeah, it looks like we're connected. All right, so it could be. There's a good possibility that it is your site. So I'm gonna just say that it is your site, and we'll try to move to something else over here and see if this site actually does it. Now we'll connect over to this one. It looks like the sites are very, very, very slow at this point. All right, well, while that's loading, let's talk about a couple of different things. We'll leave this on this for now, hmm. right? You'll see that we have portfolios, we have portraits, we have family, we have sports, we have street, we have investment. And then deep into this one section, we have an area here called blog, right? Probably one of the one things that I that I see a lot of people doing on websites. So I would assume for for one, for one second is if you want people to come back to your website, right? There's not really a lot of opportunity for people to want to come back to your site if all you're doing is putting up a gallery, right? And what happens is people post all of their pictures and they set everything up, and then they're like, oh, you know, people totally come back. But the fact of the matter is, if you look at any kind of measurements of what's happening with that, they never really do. Mm. So no one will ever come back to a website that is all portfolio-based. What happens is people just go, oh, that was, that was a really nice portfolio. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can kind of hope to get these people to come back to your site. Right. Right. It doesn't help search engine rankings. It doesn't help uh, to be able to get a repeat visitor. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really serve any of those purposes. But to me, a blog always showed your level of involvement in the industry beyond what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, what products you use, what events you're attending or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. where you're putting yourself, you know, especially with travel, travel photographers. Uh, in fact, I think one of the best blogs out there is Joe McNally's. Mm -hmm. He's got a very interesting blog and he's always posting something that's regarding work he's doing and where he's at. He's always going to interesting places. And mm -hmm. I, I just think that's, that's one of the values of a blog in my opinion. So. Right. And one of the other things that you, that people need to kind of think about is if you look at, forget about a blog from a blog standpoint, like if you look at blog as like serialized content, Right. You look at content that's happening one time versus another time versus another time. Content that happens on Monday, content that happens on Wednesday, content that happens on Friday. Mm -hmm. If you continue to do that over and over and over, what will happen is you'll condition people to turn around and say, this person's constantly doing something. He's. Yeah. I wonder what he's going to do next week. Mm -hmm. I wonder what he's going to do at this one specific time. So yeah. it creates a sense of need. Mm -hmm. Portfolios don't create a sense of need. Yeah. Portfolios are like resumes. Yeah. They don't create need. So a lot of the times I tell people, while it's good for you to have a portfolio website, I think it's a great idea. Um, if you want to be able to get a relationship with somebody that's going to come back, I would spend more time taking the blog and moving the blog onto the front end and having that be something that you're continuously updating mm -hmm. and then let people interact with what's happening on a daily basis. And this does not mean, uh, you know, every post has to be a dear diary. This is what happened this morning. This is what, you know, and, and a big list of things. Mm -hmm. It could just be a picture, caption, this is what happened, yeah. done. But it, at least it shows constant updating yeah. of information and it trains people to want to come back and take a look at that. Yeah, and people tend to think it's, you know, it's a, it's a hassle. You know, write out a big post. And like you're saying, it doesn't have to be mm. a big, long post and everything like that. Once you get in the rhythm of it, it, it just becomes second nature. It's, right. It's, it's, and, it's, and, it, and it's it's because what happens is people will turn around and be like, well, I want to be able to build a portfolio website, but then I don't want to put in any work into it after the fact. And it's like, well, then what's the intention of it? Mm. Then you're building it just to build it once and you hope that a million people come and take a look at it? Yeah. That's not necessarily the most realistic of outcomes. So why don't we do this uh, while we're um, I'm taking we're taking a look at some website stuff. We're trying to see if all of this stuff is sorted out. Let's kind of pivot a little bit mm -hmm. and talk a little bit about your class. Okay. Because you just made a you made a class that's part of this Master Effects series mm -hmm. in Photoshop. So tell us a little bit about the idea behind what's well, happening. Well, so here. the series, um, I, I had the idea several months ago about doing a, a series called Master Effects series because I wanted to do more project based classes. 
um, on Kelby One and just really take a topic and then kind of spend the entire course doing it from beginning to end. Now, this first one is actually uh, creating ca Hollywood character effects using um, the Maleficent character from the movie Maleficent with uh, Angelina Jolie. Okay. Now, some might look at this and, and say, well, I'm never going to need to create this particular effect. Um, but the point is the tools and other features I use in very different ways um, might give you an idea as that you can carry over to another project. In fact, since this class has been released, I've had two people reach out to me and say, can I do this on this project? And I'm like, absolutely. So I wanted to show you uh, a little snippet of something that I do in the class, and it's using a tool in Photoshop that you probably never thought of using in this way. Um, and it was one of the reasons I wanted to do this particular uh, course in this, and that, um, so I've got, at this point, this is like the working version of that, of that image, and what I did was I drew out these um, horns here like that. Now in the movie, she actually has them wrapped up at, to me, it looked like electric, black electrical tape, but there was a wrapped up in like black leather. And the way the light was hitting the leather, I thought it was very interesting. And I was thinking, you know, how can I achieve that, um, that look in Photoshop? And funny enough, it came to me by using the smudge tool in Photoshop. Now, a lot of people use a smudge tool for very different things, but what they probably don't realize is that when you have the smudge tool selected, which is grouped here with the blur tool, now the smudge tool is just what it, what the name says is that you click on something and you can smear it basically. But what it has up here in the options bar, you'll notice there is this thing called finger painting and it's an option you can check on. And what it does is it, whatever color is set in your foreground color swatch, it will lay down a little bit of that color and then allow you to smear it in there. So what I've done here is on this, this edge, I actually did this with a liquify tool. I gave this a little bit of a, uh, kind of a, a jagged edge there. So it had this kind of look that it was wrapped up in something. But it's, it's still not selling that effect enough. The lighting is what's going to be key here. So I've got my tool selected. I've got the strength at about 90%, and I've got finger painting selected. I'm going to make white, or make my foreground color white. And let's bring up my layers so I can make sure I'm on a blank layer. Yes, I am. And I'm just going to start on the outside here, and just start laying down some pixels and just kind of push this in. Now, when you do this, you can hold down the Option key, or Alt, if you're on Windows, and it will temporarily disable the finger painting aspect of it. So if I click in here, you can see it lays down a little bit of pixels, and then I just continue to smear it. And every time I click, it lays down more of that color. But if I hold down the Option, it temporarily disables it and just allows me to smear that effect. And I can go in here and push that lighting effect in and it immediately starts to give me some dimension on here. It really works when I go up here around this area, it's gonna curve. I'm gonna push some inside here and it's gonna give me the appearance of a surface on that and really give it look like it's got a little bit of an edge uh, mm -hmm. to it. So I'm just gonna go down to each of these little ridges and push it in, make my brush a little bit smaller and then just go and push it in and out and just swipe it like that. And that's what I did, just kind of went all the way around and pushing these elements in. I'll again hold down Option and just smear this. And you can see how it gives me that little bit of dimension. Now what I did, now I'm not going to go through and do the, the entire thing, but what I did after this is used layer styles to give it an atmospheric color. Now I painted with white, but in the end I wanted to have it where it looked like it had colored light um, shining on her. So if I just went in that layer and added a simple outer glow, and we'll make that glow blue. And let's give it a little bit of a hard light there, and I'll increase the opacity a little bit. So now you can see it's giving me a little bit of color edging on that effect there. And that's pretty much what I did going all the way around. And even when you got areas inside here, if I just click and just... Now, add, even with the layer style on there, if I lay down some pixels and then smear it, it maintains that color, but I'm able to put those little reflected elements on there. And that's how I pretty much got that edge effect. Now, one, thing, one more thing I'll show a really brief part. This was the funny part. Actually, I was actually kind of laughing when I figured this out. To get the, the highlight or the specular highlight along in the middle area of the horn, I did something rather interesting. I took the lasso tool here and then just started doing this. It's kind of doing a zigzag fashion here and then going back and forth and then I get something like that. Now, if I go under the view menu and go over here and go show and uncheck selection edges, that selection is still active even though I don't see it. So what I'm going to do is take uh, that same smudge tool and go in here 
And as I'm adding that effect, it's masking it inside that selection. And what that results in, it looks like it's strands of that oh. leather. And you can see the edges, and it's picking up that. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And that's, and, that's, and that's what's going on inside that active selection there. So then I just went down the area like that. So when I zoom out, you can see it has the illusion of picking up that specular light. And it's just because of that little zigzag selection on there. So again, it's using tools, and, and the entire course is this, is, is this way. It's taking a basic photo of a model, just a simple, straight-looking model. And uh, we start with manipulating the face and then adding all these new features in there and ultimately resulting in a fully dressed uh, Hollywood character. Most of it's from scratch, too. Now, I will say this. You don't have to have an art degree to be able to do this. Now, there is some drawing involved, but it's very, very simple. I, try, I did the best I could to keep the te techniques very simple and then adding the lighting effects in, a very, in very easy techniques to, to get that uh, realism in there. So. Yeah, and see, and that's the thing, and that's the thing that I think that... Um that's the thing that, that a lot of people miss when they work with most of this stuff is that you believe that you need to be a great artist to do this. Mm. And the fact of the matter, it isn't. In fact, it's not. You don't have to be a great artist to do this stuff. You just need to know that you need these techniques. Mm. You know, we argue the same thing about Photoshop and photography. It's like a lot of the times I tell people, you, you'd be surprised. It would shock you to know how much Photoshop is involved in the post-processing of photography. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know art. You just need to know what the tricks are to do that. And right. I think that you do a very good job of breaking that down and getting people to a spot where people can go, okay, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would make sure that I would make sure that that you give that a shot and consider it and, and take a look at the masterclass. So there've been a couple of different things that we were talking. I was checking out the I was checking out the chat and there was this this concept about uh, blogging and and what kinds of things do you blog about and what kinds of things do you want to be able to talk about in your website to get people to come back to your website. And somebody had asked um, whether or not I would put how tos on a site, whether or not I would put how to do something on a site, uh -huh, yeah. and. Uh, I, the answer that I had was just, no, I probably wouldn't put how-tos on a site. And they had asked why. And I'm like, well, it, it doesn't necessarily... If you're a photographer that's doing pictures, you don't owe anybody any explanation of how you did the picture, right? There is a very, very big difference between me doing it and you doing it. Now, I do it because I am a teacher. I, my job is to teach you, hopefully, mm -hmm. to do pictures, to make pictures, to work with Photoshop and do all that stuff. So my primary responsibility to you is to be a trainer, to be a person who teaches you how to do it. Uh, so to that end, I use my blog as a mechanism to be able to teach you. Now, if you're a photographer and all you want to do is learn and share what you've done, the worst thing that you could possibly do is add to that the concept of having to teach someone what it is that you're learning at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 there's, there's no purpose for it, there, and there's no reason for it. There's no reason for the behind the scenes. There's no reason for uh, how-to videos. There's no reason for interview videos. Like, you don't have to think about any of that stuff. It's not why you started. Hmm. You started to take pictures and share cool pictures with people. You yeah. didn't start to become a teacher. Yeah. So it, to that, what happens is people start taking a look at the entire concept of the blog, and they're like, well, then what do I blog about? You have to take apart the concept of blog and serialized content. Mm. Just because WordPress happened to start as a blog doesn't necessarily mean that you use it for the purposes mm -hmm. of a blog. All you're doing with WordPress is just having a mechanism on a page that says you post something today, you post something tomorrow, you post something tomorrow. You can use it as a blog. Mm. You can go in there and talk and give a story and talk a message and all that stuff. You could also just use it to just post a picture. Yeah, That's it. Nothing else. Just post one mm -hmm. picture. Yeah. Right? So having to separate yourself from how much you have to say with just posting something and posting something over time. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about serialized content. Mm -hmm. We're talking about having a mechanism so that your page has this happened today, this happened tomorrow, this is a picture for today, this mm -hmm. is a picture for tomorrow, this is a picture for the next day. I mean, I would think if somebody's not a teacher, if, if, if they've taken a photo and they've used an extraordinary technique, very unusual, off-the-wall thing, then I'd be curious to know how, about, how they went about that. But, yeah. But for the most part... But if part, you're not if, a teacher, yeah. you, oh, you don't... And, and that's the thing. I think that sometimes this photography business does a very big disservice to photography because then all of a sudden it's like you're owed an explanation. I don't owe an explanation as to how I made the picture mm -mm. if I'm a photographer. Yeah. I don't owe an explanation to anybody about how I took a picture. I'm just taking a picture. Now, 
for me, I'm an instructor. So as soon as I figure something out that's cool, mm-hmm. just like you, yeah. as soon as I figure something out that's cool, I can't wait to tell you. That's my job. Mm-hmm. That's my day-to-day job is to tell you. But, we're in that frame of mind. We're almost doing projects in the sense that we want it, to be able to do But it's our, them, yeah. it's our job mm-hmm. to do so, right? So if a person is just coming up in photography, they're like, oh, I got to learn how to take a picture. Oh, and then I got to learn how to be able to do a behind-the-scenes post. Oh, and I got to be able to learn how to be able to talk about these techniques. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, no, you don't. You just have to put a picture up. That's it. Now, if you want to become a teacher and you want to share techniques, mm-hmm. then absolutely, there's, we would not be the people to stop you from doing so. It's just understand that you don't have to. You yep. don't owe it to anybody and you don't have to. Mm-hmm. The reason that you're using a blog to do stuff is for serialized content. You want to train people to see a picture today, a picture tomorrow, a picture the next day. Mm-hmm. If I showed you about rc.smugmug.com, all right. This is my this is my portfolio site. So inside of here, you see this picture, you see this picture, you see this picture, you see this picture, and after seeing all of these pictures, you don't sit there and go, I can't wait to see whether or not he or changed his portfolio. Mm-hmm. No one will leave and go, huh? I wonder if RC changed his portfolio. No one would care enough to know to want to come back. There's no reason for you to. It's Wait, like so, thank you. That's so, it. I'm so done. So just as a question, so how often would you update? Por- you, would you update your portfolio? I update my portfolio. Maybe. Look, if I'm lucky, I'll take pictures that are worth a damn. Maybe three times a year. Yeah. So I was gonna say like every few months, maybe. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. every couple months, I might consider updating my portfolio. Mm-hmm. So, if you're waiting around for me to do a portfolio, that's a long time of waiting. Yeah. Right. So in that space, however, I'll take some pictures that I think are cool, that are interesting or that, you know, to to have a certain amount of interest with a person. um, And I'll post those on my website. So my website will deal with a bunch of random things that I'll do. Hmm. Like, I like this picture. I think it's a cool picture. Is it a portfolio picture? No, no but, it's but it's a cool, it's an picture. interesting picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'll continue to just post random things that will happen over time. So do you want those people to come back to your website? Mm-hmm. You want those people to do it. And that doesn't mean tell a story. That doesn't mean, you know, get all writing on it. That doesn't yeah. mean have to give technique. Here's the second thing that we talk about this. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you in another level. A lot of the times people argue about whether or not um, search engine optimization is, a, is an important thing. Mm-hmm. I would post this picture. If I were doing this as a business, I would post fireworks shot with children in Tampa, Florida, the next shot that I would do, if I had this shot here, I would post picture of knobs that I took in Tampa with this one photography. I would do this. Mm-hmm. And then this picture that I put here, picture of daughter or a children's portrait photography of this girl in Tampa. I would write that into a description. I would write that into something else. Yeah. When you have a website like that, what will happen is that content will get indexed much higher than a person who has a portfolio website Mm -hmm. because Google looks at it and goes, that is organic, iterative, serialized content. This person is constantly talking about photography in Tampa of these specific things. Mm -hmm. Naturally, without paying for anything, that goes up and indexes higher than a site that just has portfolio pictures of Tampa. Mm -hmm. So you're training people to come back. You're training search engines to find your stuff Mm. you're training yourself to have to feed it yeah there's no reason for you not to do it so so that was i think an appropriate amount of time to wait for whether or not all these websites came back up let's go back (laughs) over here real quick so inside of here uh change this column right i think Mm -hmm. this is pretty good right here array of art uh not too bad if you're doing this from a portfolio website i like the track module right i think that that's pretty neat i like the fact that it scales That's pretty good. Um, I would move the about all the way to the very end, right? I don't know what tips is, right? I would take the travel travel tips and tricks and I would put them, right, a little bit later on. I would probably move these into your blog. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Vino or over a year are, but I'm thinking that they're, I probably shouldn't do that, but. (laughs) <laughs> I have no idea what that is. I'm just going to not do that, right? Voyeur doesn't have a good connotation, so I'm I'm just going to Maybe you not. do like Candid or something like that. Candid, like candid yeah. Candid shots or something, yeah. Vino, okay, I get it. It's wine. Mm. 
All right, the making of five. Uh, never mind. Yep. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> uh, you have a good site. It's pretty good. <laughs> At the end, you have a, a no, couple there's, of there's considerations. There's just a couple that you of little should... tiny aesthetic things, but overall, it's it's a very well put together site. Uh, yeah. Overall, not bad. You might want to reorganize this thing at the top. You might re- want to worry about whether or not you want to get just because you use a smug mug site doesn't necessarily mean that you have to advertise that it is there. No, that's true. You could always put that stuff at the bottom mm-hmm. if you've paid for it. Just stick it to the bottom. Yeah. You'll be fine. Uh, love this. Marcel's site. I've seen this site several times, mm-hmm. right? I, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a Squarespace site, right? And they have, again, portfolio portraits, right? I love the full, I love the full resolution. I'm mixed on navigation at the bottom. So, I mean, this, it looks great on this site. It's just mm-hmm. that I'm not sure I like navigation I, at the bottom. I'm a traditionalist when it comes to navigation. I think mm-hmm. navigation should be on the top and it should be on the left. Yeah. I think it gets lost sometimes when you see it at the bottom. Mm-hmm. It almost looks accidental. Yeah. But that said, it, it can be it can be set that way, right? The site happens to be responsive, which I think is kind of weird. Right when you see it at the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. But it's not bad. Yeah. Right? Uh quality of the picture seemed like it's pretty good. I would probably consider Making sure that the website that the pictures are optimized so that you don't see this, but again, that's you know disclosure. It could just still be our internet connection that's mm-hmm. doing that. Just make sure that you're not updating. You know, I would probably put maybe sixteen hundred pixels on the high side. Yeah, mm-hmm. sixteen hundred pixels, seventy two DPI, quality of eight. I think would be qua- would be pretty pretty good for yeah. any kind of stuff that you're doing there, and you won't see a lot of lag. Um, from a category standpoint, if you're doing this for fun, then great. It looks awesome. You know, you have all of the different categories. People can people can get into it. Yeah, I don't know what this was. Investment, right? I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to tell people um, it's not what it costs, it's what it's worth kind of thing. You're, you're not calling it pricing because pricing sounds like prices. Uh, but this is really an investment in what you're doing. Yeah. Right? To me, that says stock, a stock site or something. Right. Yeah. But investment sounds like you're trying to sell me on the fact that this is good. Mm. Just call it pricing. People don't care. People expect it to be a price. And, and they, know what, they know what they're looking for, yeah. Right. This means that you're trying to hide. And, and again, this could just be me looking at it. This is you trying to hide the fact that you have to justify what it's going to cost. Mm. Your images are going to justify what it costs. Yeah. That's it. If you've got awesome pictures, people will be like, here. Yeah. To a certain degree. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it looks pretty good, right? Everything's fine. A lot of the times I tell people in here, you might want to put a captcha and, you know, just so that people don't robo it, Mm. right? So just put whatever, you know, captcha thing, type in the pictures that you see, type in the audio thing, just Mm. put in one level of, uh, spam protection in this one thing, I think would be a good thing. But other than that, not too bad, not too bad. Now we'll... Take a look at this one in in, in, in a couple seconds. Mm. Um, but why don't we do this? Why don't we just take a quick break? Okay. We'll go ahead and we'll monitor the chat. We'll go see what's happening there, and we'll come back and we'll review a couple more websites right here in the grid. Stick around. <laughs> space at squarespace.com award-winning photojournalist joe mcnally dave black olympic sports photographer decorated combat photographer stacy pearsall nationally recognized portrait and wedding photographer roberto valenzuela just a few of the amazing instructors you'll interact with when you attend photoshop world in las vegas hands-on training with the best in photography and design. Learn more in three days than you have in three years. Photoshop World. Be with the best. Welcome back, everybody, to The Grid. RC here with Mr. Corey Barker, hey. uh, jumping in on some website critiques. And so far, you guys have been really good, really good on the websites. I have to say, things have been okay. Uh, very small, small corrections, which, hey, look, we can take that. Oh, right? yeah. No, at least right. you're not looking at anything and going, oh. 
wow, where do we? Begin? I don't think there was one site where we, where we even reacted that way. We were like, oh, you got to be kidding me! It's no, just like everybody I mean, had something really. A important. couple of different things, but not too bad. So Alan uh, Zarinelli, right, is the next website that we're taking a look at here. Um, what could I change from this? I, I kind of like this. I, I, I like this idea here. I like this kind of scrolling thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's okay. Um, loading more articles, loading more articles. Me, as a person, I like to ha kind of have pagination, right? Mm. Uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the infinite scroll. I'd rather just be like page one, page two, page three. It's unclear where to, where to go first, you know? It's just like, right. there's so many things going on. And right, and, 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 and Alan looks like he talks about a lot mm. of different things, right? Which is okay. So if you're going to talk about a lot of different types of things, then give people a way to sort all of that stuff out, mm. all right? At that point, you might want to get rid of all of this here and set yourself set yourself up for categories, set yourself up for tags, set yourself up for searching. Um, you might want to reconsider how you're doing this on the left hand side in terms of in terms of logo stuff, right? This is using up probably twice as much space as you need to look to use. Menu got, kind of got lost a little bit over here mm -hmm. on the right hand side. I would consider moving it over to the left. I don't think people traditionally look on the right hand side for stuff. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you know, no blog post this week. Uh, here, media podcast online. So it looks like he's a podcaster. Looks Lettuce Media Podcast Update. Right? So it looks like there's... So they're using that kind of parallax scrolling mm -hmm. that they're doing there for that. Um, okay. Uh, the, okay, so it looks like there's some per changes in personal situation and... Let's take a look. So this right now, the entire parallax scrolling thing got a little annoying. All right. Mm. It, it sounds like it's a cute idea, but you want to keep the blog concept that you have very straight. If you're gonna if you're gonna give people content, serve people content. I, mean, I, I like that effect maybe on like the home page, but you know, once you once you're in the site and there, you don't need to be dazzled with all those aesthetics, I don't think. Yeah, I think they're there, you know. So. Bells and like everybody liked bells and doohickeys before, but now it's like you can put bells and doohickeys in the beginning, and then after yeah. that, it's just straight content. Like if you're going to show me a picture, show me a straight picture. Yeah. Don't, don't try to scroll it. Don't try to zoom it. Don't now, try remember to remember the days of it. flash splash pages. Yeah, you know? I mean, look, I was and, one of the big. How many of us of all hit that skip button as soon as it became live? You know, yeah, yeah. and it and it wears on people at yeah. the end of the day, mm -hmm. and and I think that now in in the versions of the internet of what's happening right now, I think that. People have kind of gotten into uh, parameters for how to be able to mm -hmm. take a look at things. There's a certain level of expectation that people have with that. One of the things that we saw in the comment was somebody turned around and said, "How would you react if? Uh, how would you react if you saw somebody using your WordPress theme? Oh yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was a D Levens RC. How would you react if you see another photographer is using the same theme, WordPress or Smugmug, even if the content is different? Not not necessarily, I, I wouldn't have a reaction one way or another. It's like no different than, you know, if somebody's wearing a different shirt or if somebody's wearing, you know, the same yeah. or the same shirt, yeah. the same pants. Yeah. It's like as a photographer, if they use the same picture as mine, yeah. then I'm going to be concerned. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I'm spending most of my time trying to make sure that my images look different than the other person's images. Yeah. Not that my website looks different. Yeah. At the end, it's content. Content is the, the images that you make and the things that you say are the most important thing. But, and the vehicle is generally the same. One of the things I like about Squarespace, and that's what I do. I'm actually, my site's currently under construction. I can't, I can't show it right now. But one thing I like about Squarespace is you start with a template. They've got a large library of templates. But once you start it, you can modify it almost to it's an unrecognizable as its original template. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what I've done every single time. I've changed a new template. I'll, I'll look at it and say, I don't want that template exactly how it is. You can go in there and customize it. Like I say, to the point where it's a completely new entity altogether. Mm -hmm. It's still using that template, but you can customize it beyond what it actually is. And that's when I'll, I'll usually do that. And again, like you say, your images are going to speak for your work. You know, you know, yeah. nobody's going to look at it and go, you know, he's using the same template. No, so, yeah, more than know. the mechanics of the site. I mean, and as, so uh, Johan Stoop had said, what's your favorite software to make a website? Dreamweaver, Adobe Muse? Actually, neither. I, I, I was a big Dreamweaver fan. I was mm -hmm. a web developer before I did all of this kind of stuff. Um, you, you'll find that a lot of that stuff, a lot of the stuff that you need to do can actually largely be done with WordPress. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of the, between WordPress and SmugMug and Squarespace, 
you can do a lot of stuff. There's tons of other sites, and, yeah. and I'm sure that they're all great. So I don't want to necessarily mm -hmm. be like, this is the best. Yeah. What I have found in working with a lot of different sites is that for me, a lot of the stuff that you need to do, you can do inside of WordPress, yeah. order fulfillment, and portfolio and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think you can beat SmugMug yeah. in mm -hmm. terms of quality. Are there other ones? Yes. And I'm sure if they're working for you, that's wonderful. Yeah. But these guys, for me, in my opinion, I think they've, they've got it handled. Yeah, when it comes to that kind of stuff, and it's so, very intuitive. Like I said, if you're not internet savvy, you, you no, the the days are gone where you're thinking, "Well, I I don't know how to do HTML, I don't know code, I can't do my own website." It's like you don't, I don't, I don't know any of that. Mm -hmm. And I've managed to spend a good deal of time, and I'll put together a pretty impressive website, in my opinion. And you don't need to know any of that. Yeah, and Scott was the person who actually changed my mind on that because when I first when I first came here to do work, mm -hmm. um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to teach people the benefits of HTML, and I'm going to teach people. I want to be the guy that leads everybody to action script and mm -hmm. coding. And, and I'm, before this, I was teaching people Java, not JavaScript, Java. Yeah. And I'm like, programmer, I'm going to turn around and do that. And he's like, dude, people don't care. Yeah. They don't care. You know, it's not like people turn around and go, you're going to paint a picture. And in order for you to paint a picture, I got to show you how to collect horse hairs. And this is an analogy that I always make. It's like, you want to learn how to paint, you care less about grabbing horse, finding how to get horse hairs, how to put them together, how to make a brush out of wood so that you can learn how to, you just want the brush. Yeah. You want the brush, you want the color, you want to paint. Right. That's mm -hmm. it. And that's what happens with that. Is Dreamweaver great? It's awesome. Is Muse great? It's great. I don't want to spend that kind of time with it. Yeah. I can design a website on WordPress in like six clicks. Yeah. Click, 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 done. Mm. I want to focus on putting my content on it. That's yeah. the most important portion. Well, and that's what a lot of, and like you said, that's where a lot of people they get frustrated and quit because of the developing of the site process. You know, like you say, it's put it to where you can concentrate on your content and how it looks, and not have to worry about all that stuff under the hood and something like that. So here's an interesting question here. It says, "Hey, in our RC and Corey, uh, your take on prices on websites? Um, when I did have mine, I, I actually preferred." If people would inquire, send an inquiry as for, you know, I don't really list prices on my website. And I don't know if you, you don't either. No, no, I, I, I don't like talking about, I'm, I'm okay with talking about mm -hmm. prices. I don't list them. Yeah. Right. So I'll ask people, you know, come in because then it, 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 that becomes just more of a negotiating tactic. Yeah. Right. So if you turned around and you, there has been plenty of times where I've told people, hey, look, this portrait is going to cost you thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And people have been like, that's it. And I'm like, Joo. yeah. A thousand dollars to start. I should have said two. No. And you know, but then there's been people that have said, you know, this portrait is going to cost you a thousand dollars, and they're like, oh, yeah. But I still want to do it. I still want to help them out. Mm -hmm. So it, the analogy that I make is that old teacher analogy. It's like you, you, you can start, you can start like this mm -hmm. and end like this, but you can't start like this and end like this. Yeah. It's like you have to start. So you'd rather be the guy that starts at a thousand dollars and cuts somebody a break for five hundred. Mm -hmm. Then be the guy that shot for five hundred, and then all of a sudden jacked it to a thousand. Yeah. yeah. So you can it gives you a better it gives you a better spot for negotiation. Mm -hmm. I think in that space. Yeah. Um, so that would be something slideshows. So some uh, Stephanie's had said, for dear God, don't ever put music on your slideshows. I happen to be a huge, huge fan of mm -hmm. music <clears throat> pictures, but you're absolutely right. I do not put them into slideshows mm -hmm. anymore, or, or into flash websites right. or scrolling mm -hmm. websites or most of that stuff a lot of the times what i like about that is i like that you want to take if i were to take a subset of pictures if i want to add music to them that is a video yeah and mm -hmm. that video belongs in the place where everybody goes to see video sure. YouTube. youtube yep mm -hmm. so if you're going to make a slideshow of work i usually tell people you can do it in photoshop i got classes on kelby one to do it take your slideshow make it Put in the description where your website is, take the slideshow and put it up on YouTube. Go mm -hmm. to Triple Scoop. Right? We tell people all the time, Triple Scoop Music yep. is a great place for you to get music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Put them into your pictures, put it on YouTube, and then tell people to come back to your site. And that has more to do with how to leverage your social media sites, Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. Bring those people back over to your website rather than just embed it on your site. Or the worst thing that you could possibly do is embed your video on Facebook. Because then you get nothing out of it. I'd rather mm -hmm. tell you about a video that I made on Facebook and have you come to my website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so there's that. Now, uh, it looks like it's five o'clock. So we're just gonna we're gonna actually we try to end on already? time. Already? Wow. On time here. Yeah. On time. We have a couple of things that we want you to win. We want you to win Urban Exploration Photography by Todd Sipes. 
right? So you can win one of these books, right? From there, uh, you can also win, the right? So we layer. have that one. This one's a pretty cool book, I gotta say. So The Last Layer mm -hmm. by Russell Brown. No, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, that's, uh, that's Russell on the cover. By, Russell on the cover. It's uh, Bonnie Pierce Latka, if you will. And I, this actually is kind of cool because it not only has a lot of digital techniques, but there are some practical techniques, um, like doing stuff with paint and just and then taking a picture of them, bringing them into Photoshop and like that. Nice. So it's, a, it's an interesting um, take on, on certain uh, uh, types of methods like that. So very good book. And yes, that's Adobe's own Russell Brown right there on the cover. See that? There right. Somebody had just mentioned SoundCloud. Look for free content under the Creative Comment. Right? A lot of the, and, and this is the last piece of advice that I give you. And I, I happen to be a very big proponent of two sites uh, where we're talking about this. So Triple Scoop Music was one of them. If you don't know it, mm -hmm. this would be one place for you to take a look. Right. The second one that I usually tell people is I, I go whole hog because this will take this will be expensive. So this is good. Mm. Right. If you go over here, this is expensive. Getty Images, when I've tried to price out music here, mm -hmm. it's like four hundred dollars for a year or something for yeah. one song. Yeah. Will that song sound like the song that you have in iTunes? Absolutely. Yeah. It will sound professional. The quality is sound there. Yeah. Quality. Mm -hmm. um, triple scoop. Will sound like quality for a fraction of fraction of that, of that yeah. stuff. When you start looking for sound and music in the royalty free, free, you everybody use it. What you'll find is two things: music is something that everybody will copy, mm -hmm. and that grates me. Like if I see a slideshow and I'm like, I know that song. I've heard that song on 14 other slideshows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That looks amateur. If the music that you use sounds like a 70s infomercial because the free music sounds cheesy, mm -hmm. that automatically cuts down all of the credibility that you have in the slideshow. Mm -hmm. So music is one of those things that you don't want to chintz on and you don't want to play with. Mm -hmm. That's why we recommend Triple Scoop. Yep. They happen to do really well on the music side of it. Yep. Anyway, <coughs> just have to mention that real quick. Indeed, yeah. And we now, use Triple Scoop. Uh, Kevin One Productions, we actually use it uh, quite yep. a bit for stuff like that. Absolutely so. do, absolutely do. Yep. So I, so we use that. We use Squarespace. Uh, smug, like I have a Smug Mug website. Mm -hmm. You have a Squarespace website. I do. Mm -hmm. We tend to use WordPress quite a bit. Now, uh, these two books. One of you guys is going to win this book. Before we do that, I do want to mention again, if you're on Kelby One, make sure that you take a look at the Master Effects class. Corey has done a wonderful job. And this entire thing is oh, based is. on the character Maleficent that you mm -hmm. saw in the movie. So Corey will take you step by step on how to be able to start with the portrait and brings you right through a journey in Photoshop where you involves incorporating elements from other sources as well as, you know, creating new elements from here, scratch. And I'll show you real quick. So if you see on my screen here, right here, this is the image I start with in the class. And it's provided as a download so you can actually follow along. But this is the base image that it starts with, and we take this and manipulate it and to look like Maleficent from start to finish. So right. be so sure to check that out. So, so it's, a great, it's a great place for you to take a look mm -hmm. at that. And we also have a new class, uh, Dreamweaver. Next steps with Janine Warner. So if you are a person who's going to be doing Dreamweaver and you're going to take, you know, you're going to dive into it and you need a person, the person that's going to walk you through that is going to yep. be Janine Warner. Oh, yeah. In this course, you're going to learn how to create a variety of different page layouts using HTML and CSS. So Janine shows you how to design Photoshop and move on to Dreamweaver. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can do different layout features as well as how to be able to optimize your finished web pages for viewing them on tablets and smartphones. You have all access to all of this stuff. You can do that over mm -hmm. at kelby1.com. Very cool. Now, also another thing to be able to point out is get your Photoshop World Ticket six, uh, Total Success Toolkit. All right, so there's to over 11 Total Success Toolkit. Over $1,100 in value and includes a professional portfolio of you and a year of Kelby One membership at an unbelievable price. To get this bundle, go to photoshopworld.com slash success. And, we're, and time is running out. Uh, Photoshop World is coming up uh, August 10th. We're going to be out there. Right? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, so. it, it's my favorite show. It, it's awesome. I, I love being able to connect with all of you guys that are out there. So I think it'll be a great thing. And if you are already registered and going to be out there, be sure to stop us and say hi. Yeah, if you're, if you're not in either one of our classes, then at least stop us in the hallway and say hi to us. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the last thing. Oh, oh these books. No, no, these books are not for you guys. <laughs> these books, unfortunately, are for me. Um, I, I wanted to take a look at a whole bunch of different things. Uh, so I, I've just been kind of playing around. And Jim Krause is a graphic designer guy. And 
I have been wanting to see uh, some of his most recent books. So I ordered, I ordered Color for Designers, right? 95 Things You Need to Know When Choosing Colors and Layouts and Illustrations. Mm -hmm. So this is like my required reading. So whenever I get a stack of books, I'm like, I got to sit down and read it. So I'm really excited about this. Lessons in typography, right? I kind of want to up my design game. So Jim's just made all of these books. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to take a look at that. And then he's got visual design. Yep. So these three books, I think, are going to sit at the bedside for quite a while and then we got <laughs> hack into digital print we got notes from visual elements now i i have this one this notes on color i like this book because it's the way it's presented it's presented as if it was a handwritten notebook or a diary and it's got really interesting concepts about color and it really explains it in a very very simple way so actually i i, I have this in my bathroom do you really <laughs> nice so anyway so i ordered so i ordered these i wanted to take a look at them and jim Krause is a guy who's been doing this for a while i mean he was the guy like that did a whole bunch of the color index books right mm -hmm. so i was really excited to nice. see these and i'm like I got some reading. I got some <laughs> reading I can do tonight, unfortunately. But you know what? As soon as I'm done with them, if you guys want them, I'll be more than happy to send it over to you guys. Uh, how do they do a contest? This is what I want you to do. I want you to go to the contest webpage. There it is, right there. You can do that mm -hmm. at kelby1.com slash contest. Go to the grid, put in your name, put in your email address, and put in a website if you want us to take a look at it. Give us a comment, question. Okay. Tell us which one of the Request, books you want to write. anything like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll be pretty good. Yeah. But anyway, thanks guys for, so for stopping by. Thanks for kind of putting up with all, a little bit of the technical glitches. We're really, really excited also about this because this was also one of the first shows that our own Jib Man actually did. Right? Normally, Arnaldo is the guy that's kind of actually sitting here on set. Oh, yes. Yeah, so and he's person, in the booth right now. The, yeah. the most important person out of this entire outfit is Meredith. Mm -hmm. So Meredith runs this show. Like yeah. She's controlling everything in the control room. And she actually was doing some cross-training. And look at that. Yeah. So now we've got, uh, we've got Arnaldo sitting in the controller seat, and she's mocking him. Look. She's like, ah, you can't do this. You can't do this, punk. And this is like normally what he looks like right there. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's his normal face right Th there. That's the normal face. Nope. Oh, he switches off of the no. switch back to the graphic, Arnaldo. He, he's in the control room. He's Rule controlling one. what we see. If the talent says switch back to the graphic, switch back to the graphic. Go ahead and do it. All right, we're just going to wait until you, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Look at that face. He's like, what? I don't understand this. <laughs> it's so different to me. I, I must learn this. all of this. He looks like an older Guillermo. That's awesome. <laughs> but anyway, we had to give him a little bit of grief while he was sitting in the intro Indeed, room. indeed. So right. doing, but, but thanks, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Next week, we will have Scott back, and we will be able Scott, to do yeah, and for that, And there's a couple people that asked. I know they asked about Brad, but uh, Scott and Brad are actually in London this week. Scott had a seminar tour stop in London uh, just the other day, so they are still there doing that. So they should be back here next week uh, for the normal show. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you guys next week right here on The Grid. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.